This week in Jamaica now, seven days of COVID lockdown, government racing to contain a rapid increase in deaths and infections. Delta in Jamaica, Westmoreland and St. Elizabeth, the epicenter. St. Elizabeth, we had six cases. Westmoreland, five cases. Manchester, two cases. Then, vaccination for students to return to face-to-face -face classes. Have all the members of the cabinet taken the jab? I can't tell you if every minister is vaccinated. What I can say is that we made provision for all ministers to be vaccinated. Why the government didn't pull the permit for the Dream Weekend party series. Tropical Storm Gray strikes Jamaica, leaving $171 million in damage. And Tina Clayton claims gold for Jamaica at the World Under-20 Championships. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. Jamaicans rushed to supermarkets on Friday ahead of a series of lockdowns as the government races to contain a rapid increase in COVID deaths and infections. The Prime Minister has announced a total of seven days of lockdowns. Sunday, August 22 to Tuesday, August 24. Sunday, August 29 to Tuesday, August 31 and September 5. Why not a straight seven-day lockdown? Let me answer you this way. A seven-day lockdown is not inconceivable. We have never done it before, and we are always sensitive to the nature of our society where people live day to day and people have limited savings. So we have to be very careful about that. Not inconceivable, but we wouldn't do it just now. The Prime Minister says flights will continue. However, people going to and from the airports must be able to show a copy of their itinerary. People going to get their COVID vaccines will also be allowed, but they must have proof. And funerals have been banned from August 25 to September 7. Meanwhile, the health ministry this week confirmed that the deadly Delta variant of COVID-19 is in Jamaica. Of 60 samples sent overseas for testing, 40 were returned. 22 were positive for the Delta variant. The parishes of St. Elizabeth and Westmoreland had the highest number of positive results. In the meantime, the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie says the situations at hospitals are extremely bad as many are now over capacity. We were able to manage about 700 patients on beds that we had, we had prepared for management of COVID patients. We have now gone above that to about 800 patients that are presently on beds. Now, this means that we are affecting the other patients that would be admitted to hospital. Our capacity to manage those patients are decreased because staff have to be reallocated to manage COVID beds, resources have to be reallocated to manage the patients on those beds, and it also means that persons have long waits before they get into a bed. And the Education Minister Fable Williams this week announced that face-to-face -face classes will resume in September, but only for students who are vaccinated. Other students will be accommodated via online classes. We are emphasizing that getting more people vaccinated, including children, is key to getting, is key in helping us to return to face-to-face -to -face classes. We've shared the broad outlines of the plan with the Jamaica Teachers Association and have the assurance that they're fully on board. The current situation requires all hands on deck and we are happy for the collaboration among ministries and you know, the education and health sectors. Now we're saying to parents, uh, now is your time to recognize the urgency of the time and take your children to be vaccinated. We are counting on everyone. This week, Jamaica received 208,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine from the United States. They will be used to inoculate children 12 years and older in Jamaica. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is reporting that all the members of the cabinet and the executive have been vaccinated against COVID-19. The Prime Minister was asked on Thursday night whether his executive had been vaccinated, but he was unable to say. I can't tell you if every minister is vaccinated. What I can say is that we made provision for all ministers to be vaccinated. On Friday, the Office of the Prime Minister released a statement saying, following checks, it can confirm that all cabinet ministers and ministers of state have been inoculated against COVID-19. And the Prime Minister Andrew Holness has rejected claims that the Dream Weekend Party Series in Negril Westmoreland was permitted despite COVID concerns, 
to satisfy influential organizers. We had how many large events? 20 were approved. And so once we gave that period that we were approving small and large events and the, the approvals were granted, we thought it best not to withdraw the approvals. However, you will acknowledge, Damien, that we reduced the parameters in which they could operate, meaning that the curfews were set at 11 o'clock. We reduced them right down to, I believe, 7, and on weekends they went down to 3 or 2 o'clock. I think it was 3 o'clock. So we did reduce the parameters in which they could operate without withdrawing the approvals that we had given. Uh, because then you would have the exposure of people putting out significant outlay of capital and so forth. So we had to bear all kinds of those considerations. At the time of the party, West Maland was on the radar of health authorities because of the high daily numbers of COVID-19 being recorded. And a day before it concluded, Permanent Secretary in the Health Ministry Dunstan Bryan disclosed that Westmoreland's Sablamar Hospital had recorded the highest rate of COVID hospitalizations at 167% of its capacity. Jamaica is now chalking up losses as a result of Tropical Storm Grace. Preliminary indications are that some 198 roads were affected. Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, reported that several communities were without power. On Thursday night, the Prime Minister disclosed that the road damage had amounted to $171 million. During the passage of the storm, several vehicles got stuck along flooded and sunken roadways in the corporate area. Jamaica's Tina Clayton this week won the women's 100-meter final in a personal best 11.09 seconds at the World Athletics Under-20 Championships in Nairobi, Kenya. It means Jamaica now owns all the women's 100-meter sprint titles for all the world events. Elaine thompson Hira is the Olympic 100-meter champion, and Shelley Ann Fraser Price is the women's 100-meter world championships gold medalist. Clayton, an Edwin Allen High School student, advanced from the semifinal as the fastest qualifier with 11.34 seconds. She turned 17 two days before her golden run. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page. Subscribe today and turn on your notifications. I'm Damian Mitchell and before we go, sights and scenes from the Bogwalk Gorge in St. Catherine during the passage of Tropical Storm Grace. I love your family, you can't go on. If you love your family, turn back. If you don't love your family, you can't go on. It's not your life. The road covered around there? Yes. Rivis Corner. Danger. Yeah, I got around there.